and this cancel culture where it's like, because you said this, even though it might be true, this makes you a this. And therefore you're a rotten, despicable, awful person because you're a this. I mean, this is, this is, this is McCarthyism. This is just classic McCarthyism, uh, plain and simple. Uh, I mean, I mean, there's no other, this is what they did during the McCarthy period, right? During the McCarthy mm -hmm. period, you know, you wrote an article advocating for workers' rights. Well, everybody knows that Karl Marx believed in workers' rights. The worker and the capitalist is a communist thing. You're a communist. You're a communist. Yeah. And then you go, oh, I, I'm not a communist. Oh, I, I hate communism. Oh, well, you better prove it. There's a list of 10 people in the communist party that you can turn. Oh, oh, yes, sir. Yes, I will. I mean, this is this is the same stuff they did during McCarthyism. And it's shocking to me that people on the left can't see this, right? That That you can say completely true things, but somehow, because you said it, that means that you're a bad person. You're one of these categories of bad people, right? And they, the, the list of bad people gets like longer every day, right? <laughs> you, know, you, know, you know what I mean? So yeah, like, like you know, where's the line drawn, right? Yeah, there's, this, there's a new category of bad person every day. It's like it's like a you know it's like a new adjective they throw at you, right? If you disagree, if you question what the U.S. government says about China, you're then a genocide denier, right? Uh, you know, if you question. Uh, you know, if you don't agree with U.S. foreign policy in Syria, you're an Assadist. And they, they invent a new label to put on people. And the memo goes out to all these liberals that, uh, you know, if you're one of these people, you're bad. These type of people, they're bad. They're bad. And so it's like, you know, it's like and then everyone has to then rush to prove they're not one of these things. How about we talk about facts? You know, not what labels we can put on people, but what's true. And what's not? How about we talk about that? That's what journalism is supposed to be about, isn't it? Exactly. Yeah. And I'm seeing a trend here about how the people who repeat this stuff are uh, have have ties to or are paid by um, corporations, billionaires or the intelligence community. Just yeah. like I, I had no idea that BreadTube had had uh, people that that fund them that have ties to intelligence. That's it's it's not it's not surprising to me. I mean, um, the individual who has been acting as kind of an advisor, again, not going to say advisor, that, okay. uh, look, you know, uh, uh, you know, he's somebody who's been tied to deprogramming in the past. And you can read all that deprogramming and Google deprogramming. It comes from this whole, this whole scare about CIA brainwashing and communist brainwashing and the Manchurian candidate, you know, in the 1960s and seventies, there was an obsession with brainwashing and deprogramming. And the, the individual who is tied to BreadTube and who has been advising them I, on very good information from a very reliable source, I have that information. That individual, um, you know, he is was the top deprogrammer in the 70s, is still running a, a, a deprogramming operation. Um, and basically, it shows that, uh, that basically uh, we have a situation where there's a fight in the ruling class and BreadTube is a deprogramming operation. Basically, they are they feel that many people have been, quote unquote, brainwashed by the alt right, by, you know, by, you know, pro Trump voices or libertarianism or Stefan Molyneux or whatever. So BreadTube is a deprogramming operation. It's an attempt to unbrainwash people by the alt-right. And it's coming from pretty high levels of the deep state and pretty pretty big corporations that I, I would argue. Um, and, I, you know, I take apart the various individuals. They're all very, very shady. You know, it's interesting. You know, I've been doing left-wing activism for years. Uh, you, and I, I talk about my record in the very back of the book. I, I have a note on the political development of the author. Um, you know, I have a record of being a leftist. I was at Occupy Wall Street. Before that, I was doing police brutality work in Cleveland. Uh, you know, but these people came out of nowhere. It's like just out of the blue. They they just arose, right? And some of them have got, you know, connections to Hollywood. And some of them are failed comedians. Like, I mean, this one person is a failed comedian who was doing movie reviews. And suddenly he's now the internet, you know, the YouTube algorithms expert on communism and anarchism. Uh, you know, I mean, it's just out of the blue, these people that no one have ever met before. I've been going to protests for years. I've never seen these people, uh, you know, no record of them being in any activist group or leftist group or doing any real life activism ever. And out of the blue, suddenly they're online and 
and that's that's who you need to listen to if you believe in socialism and communism. And they just so happen to repeat State Department talking points and smear and try to destroy the reputation of all kinds of people who don't. Right? If you if you don't, suddenly all the real leftists who've been protesting all these wars and exposing these lies suddenly we're all secret Nazis, don't you know? It's really hilarious. You know, I, I just wanted to say this. You know, there have been criticisms of this book. It's just been out mm -hmm. for. A right and they've been criticizing this book i have not heard one true criticism of this book yet i'm waiting i mean i'm sure there's some some argument that i made someone could disagree i have not heard one true criticism one of these hacks who i didn't even mention in the book because he's not not, not legit and, and and he's not relevant enough is this this bad empanada or whatever he said on his screen uh. not a single citation in this book well i will direct you toward the first page of the book the very first page has a citation. I cite Cornelius Cardew, his song, Lords of Labor, and I'll then take you to the bibliography. You know, the bibliography that begins on page 191 and goes on for multiple pages. I cite Karl Marx in this book. I cite Lenin in this book. I cite CIA documents in this book. I, I, there are so many citations that he says to his viewers, there's not a single citation in his book. <laughs> and it's like, that's I mean, so disingenuous. Yeah, I mean, it's like, I mean, he can say that. I can't stop him from saying that. And he's got more YouTube subscribers than I've got. But it's like some things are true and some things are not. My book has plenty of citations in it, my friend. Uh, you know, and anyone who buys that will see that. Uh, you know, it's not an academic book by any means. It's not, you know, this isn't like a, a college thesis where, I, you know, I, I'm citing every paragraph. But the works that are quoted are cited. There is a bibliography. There is, you know, I mean, this is this is ridiculous to claim there's no citations in the book. That's ridiculous. Um, another thing that was said against the book, and I, I thought this was amazing, was that um, I'm describing in the opening chapter, I'm describing different different uh, different you know bread tube personalities, and I mentioned uh, H bomber guy or, or Brewis, right? Uh, Harris, mm -hmm. I think it's Michael Her Harris Michael Brewis. I mentioned him and I'm just, it's just, it's two paragraphs. I'm just describing him. It's not an argument or anything. And I mentioned uh, that he, you know, he was joined by, uh, he was joined on a, a stream that he did to raise money for mermaids, which is a, a pro transgender charity in Britain. I said he was joined by U.S. Representative Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez and Chelsea Manning, as well as a number of Hollywood actors such as Colin Mockery and Mara Wilson. So based on that, you know, this bad empanada character is now telling his audience that I don't support Chelsea Manning and I think Chelsea Manning is pro-imperialist. How does he get that from that? This is like, I mean, it's like, and again, like if these people were making honest arguments, I would take this seriously, but they just lie excessively. I mean, you know, I mean, they're, they're trying to find the secret like Nazi code sign in my hand gestures. I mean, these people are, are excessive <laughs> liars, right? I mean, I mean, I mean, you know, Vosh has said on his stream over and over again that I am a literal Nazi. Like not, not that I'm, I have fascistic tendencies, that I'm a literal Nazi, okay? My wife is not white, okay? I spent years going to court with police brutality victims in Cleveland. Uh, you know, I mean, I, I was protesting against police brutality long before Black Lives Matter had ever been tweeted out as a hashtag, right? And these people say that I, I'm a literal Nazi? How in the world can I be a literal Nazi, right? I mean, I can be many things, but, you know, I mean, you know, I mean, I mean, if you think you're going to see me sig heiling, you know, with the white nationalists, I mean, this is ridiculous. This is just absolutely ridiculous. Um, and the fact that these people, you know, it's like there's the whole expression, um, you know, if you read, if you look at, you know, Mein Kampf by Hitler, the literal Nazi, he talks about how when you lie, you shouldn't lie little. You should lie big. You tell the big lie because people find it really hard not to believe a big lie. Well, I mean, these people are experts at the big lie, right? I mean, they would have you believe that, you know, the, the International Action Center, Ramsey Clark, uh, the former U.S. Attorney General, uh, the Answer Coalition, all the people who've been leading great anti-war protests over the years uh, and, and have, you know, broken the sanctions and offered the hand of friendship to the people of the world as an anti-war movement, that they're all Nazis because they don't support U.S. foreign policy. They would have you believe that the, the tankies of the Communist Party USA who built the Civil Rights Congress of the United States, you know, William L. Patterson, uh, you know, Paul Robeson, I mean, the people that were sticking up for the Scottsboro Nine 
Angelo Herndon, a, a Communist Party organizer who was sentenced to death for handing out leaflets during the 1930s and eventually the Supreme Court freed him. Uh, you know, that these, these people, because they liked Stalin, which they did, they praised Stalin a lot, somehow they're the same as, as white supremacists. If that is not an evil and downright wrong message, I don't know what is, right? But that is that mm -hmm. is overall one of the main points of bread too, that those of us on the left who are actually anti-imperialist are Nazis. And that is a ridiculous argument. Um, another thing to point out is that capitalism in our time is not pencil factories, all right? In our mm -hmm. time, we live in a, an age of giant monopolies big banks and corporations, big corporate cartels and trusts and syndicates, big, huge corporations dominating the world, holding back economic development, trying to keep the world poor so that they can stay rich, right? That's called imperialism. And Vladimir Lenin wrote a whole book about it called Imperialism, the Highest Stage of Capitalism. And, you know, not just Lenin, Naomi Klein wrote a very good book called The Shock Doctrine about neoliberalism and how that operates. And Arundhati Roy, uh, a very good academic from India, has written about this. Noam Chomsky has talked about this, that the, the system of capitalism in our time is a global monopoly system, right? It is a global economic order where big banks and, dare I say, international bankers and corporations dominate the world and hold back economic development. That has been Marxist analysis since the time of Lenin, since 1916 when Lenin wrote about it. But according to BreadTube, that's anti-Semitic. I, why? I don't know. I mean, I mean, somehow you talk about big banks and corporations ruling the world. They say, ah, you're talking, you, what you mean is Jews. And it's like, no, no, we don't mean Jews. In fact, among the richest families in the United States, the majority are not Jewish. The Rockefellers are not Jewish, right? Uh, the Carnegies are not Jewish. Mm -hmm. The Mellons are not Jewish. So, so I'm not talking about Jews when I'm talking about imperialism. I'm talking about imperialism. I'm talking about right. economics, for goodness sakes. And that's another thing you're not allowed to do. That's class reductionism, according to BreadTube. You can't talk about workers wanting higher wages. They can't talk about people going on strike. Oh, no, 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 no. We have to talk about identity politics. We have to talk about white privilege. You know, and this is, this is BreadTube, and this is not Marxism. BreadTube serves imperialism. That's why you should read my book. <laughs> when they resort to ad hominems, Caleb, you know, you know that means that you won, right? Because they 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 can't argue with the facts, so that's why they're resorting to ad hominems. Because you're you're disrupting their illusion of real of reality. Like they're they're comfortable thinking that this is how the world is. Like and they they have this illusion, and it makes them feel comfortable. So when you present them with things that makes them uncomfortable, like the truth, then you know it's like a it's like their survival is being threatened, and they just lash out with ad hominems. They don't know what else to say, and they lie. One and it's so unfortunate say, these lies promote division. One thing I will say, which is interesting, is that a lot of the content that if you watch, and I had to watch a lot of this as I put the book together, my head was ready to explode watching all this <laughs> content. But a lot of the content that you get from Vosh and, and Thought Slime and all of that, it, they're not talking about ideas. They're not even talking about politics. It's this weird kind of inside baseball. Of like, did you see what this person just did? Yeah, well, they're an idiot. Yeah, I mean, it's this weird kind of like high school... So high school talking. Yeah, it's like, don't talk to them. They're they're stupid. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah and and they're and they're fighting with each other too. They all hate each other. <laughs> not just not just those of us. Surprise I mean, me. They all hate each other. They throw mud at each other. And and really, so much of what they do, so much cursing. And I mean, I'm I'm okay. I'll drop an f bomb every so often on this channel, you know, on my channel, whatever. But but so much cursing, so much talk about feces, uh, so much talk about sex. So much talk about about you know dirt and slime and it, there's just you get this gross feeling right I mean it, it, it just and and the sad thing is I mean look at the suicide rate right now I mean you know so many young people are are growing up and uh, you know um, they you know they 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 do feel like they're dirt and they do feel like they're slime and all of that and you listen to these people and they're just hurling negativity just endless amounts of negativity personal attacks on other people, put downs against other people. And then they put forward this argument, there's too many people in the world, we need to degrow, we need to roll back the human population. You know, we're all gonna die from some big ecological catastrophe. The government's run by a bunch of secret Nazis. Did your parents vote for Trump? That means they're probably part of this secret Nazi conspiracy. You know, and it's just this endless amount of negativity that comes out of these people. And I mean, it's like, 
you know, are they doing good by putting this? I mean, it's like, you know, on my streams, I do criticize capitalism. I criticize imperialism, but I am all about making people proud of who they are. I'm all about mm -hmm. inspiring people and telling people to go out and fight for justice. That's why I became a socialist. I wanted to be part of creating a whole new world where we didn't have the chaos of the market and greed. We actually had a rational economy. Socialism for me has always been about optimism. It's always been constructive. And I'm, I'm really proud of the fact that I started to put on a suit because when I went to Ecuador in 2013 to the World Festival of Youth and Students, a global communist gathering, I met communists from Vietnam. I met communists from Angola. I met communists from India. I met communists from many different countries, Bolivia, Venezuela, and they were all wearing suits, you know, and they were serious politicians who, you know, they led organizations of millions of working class people that were fighting for their rights and organizing in their communities. And honestly, you know, in the book towards the end, when I'm talking about my own development, um, you know, I'll say that probably the closest thing to what a communist party is supposed to be that I've ever seen in the United States the closest thing I've ever seen was a, it was a black nationalist organization in Cleveland called Black on Black Crime Incorporated. Um, and they were a black nationalist group on the east side of Cleveland. They were led by Art McCoy, the owner of Superfly Barbershop. And whenever anything was going on in the community, they would have, you know, every Wednesday they had a meeting and there'd be 80, 90 people there. And they would talk about hospital closings. They would talk about the rent. They would talk about the speed light cameras. They would talk about police brutality. When gangs were fighting each other, they would go out and negotiate a truce to bring peace to the community. That's what a communist party is. It's the center of the community, the organizers. That's what the Black Panthers were. That's what the Communist Party USA used to be in the 1930s. And if you go to Venezuela, that's what the United Socialist Party is. And if you go to Iran, that's what the Basij councils are. You go to China, that's what the Communist Party is. You go to, to Greece and the, and the parts of Greece that are run by the Communist Party, uh, you know, you go to India and Kerala, where the Communist Party is the majority party. They're in the community. They're meeting people's needs. They're assembling people. They're involving people in the political process. They, you know, that's what a communist is supposed to do. A communist is an upstanding citizen who loves their country and loves their community so much that they want to get rid of the greed of big corporations and put the people first and bring people into politics, expand democracy. That's that's what a communist really is. And uh, it's not somebody sitting on the internet talking about the end of the world while they cuss up a storm. 